Morning, Andrew. Morning, Chris. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Just uh, getting settled into the year. It's um, rapidly uh, leaving us behind. Uh, absolutely, it is. Yeah, it's obviously uh, early March, and uh, East is about three weeks away. It's a scary prospect. Yes, yep. School holidays is the thing that I think about with Easter. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, juggling the children, and I'm sure there'll be many of those out there who are in a similar position. So, no doubt. Yes. But uh, there's been a lot happening in the um, economic world too, I suppose. Yeah, there has. Yeah. The last few months have been pretty busy. Yeah, and some, some key data has come out and yeah, you know, and even some updated forecasts that, that touch on all the all the key indicators that we'll, we'll go yeah, through we'll this morning, too. Bruce. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. So... Running through, I guess, where things sit from uh, a GDP perspective, given the last recording was uh, Willis Tales Watson's sort of overview for uh, the outlook for 2024, um, this would be the first time we would have touched on GDP growth, both in Australia and around the world, uh, since December. Mm. So, you know, there's a couple of months change here. Yeah, and, and clearly it, it reflects the, the underlying sentiment that, that the uh, the central bank's efforts to curb inflation is starting to to come out mm, in, the, in the data, and, and naturally, with any of these sort of the key economic indicators, you do expect a, a lag in the uh, just the, the nature of by well, the time things get analysed and, and even just things to unravel and yeah. play out in the economy. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, clearly, yeah, GDP is trending down uh, globally across the board. Yeah, and I think um, one of the major things that central banks will be trying to avoid, I guess, is GDP coming down too far. Mm -hmm. So we want to be reducing interest rates just with, but without killing the growth of the economies. So I feel like we're really in that interesting phase now where, well, you can't say inflation is necessarily being tamed, but I think the first half of the inflation job, you could strongly argue, has been dealt with. And now it's about how do we re-stimulate growth without, you know, killing the goose. Yeah, perhaps perhaps a, a little bit of a concern is the unemployment rate in Australia, which yeah. has increased pretty significantly since September. Yep. It's, uh, it was 3.6 and it's crept up to 4.1. Yeah. So that's, yep. I guess that's, that's a, a concern. You, you know, you wouldn't want that to climb much higher. No, no, it's interesting. Because I, I, when I was looking at these charts, um, over the last couple of days, just interesting in terms of, especially that bottom left corner, the GDP growth of the G3 economies, you know, where you can see um, the US is kind of tending upwards, I suppose, and we'll kind of get to the inflation story after this, but sort of the US seem to be the most well positioned currently in terms mm. of being able to grow the economy um, whilst uh, having inflation coming down. Um, whereas you can see the Euro area, uh, I guess, is sort of having a, they're getting down to the point now where um, GDP growth is sort of close to zero. So, yeah, and you know we're probably not far behind that in Australia, to be yep. honest. Yeah, which we'll we'll see in, like, yep. on the next slide. Yeah. So there's some there's definitely uh, not necessarily challenges challenges, but there's definitely some challenges uh, ahead. Yeah, so Australian GDP growth here, Chris, as we were just alluding to on the previous slide, the uh, def definite slowdown. In Australia, yeah. so GDP numbers for Australia are actually out today. Yeah, uh, yeah. going live probably a few, or a few hours early. A few yeah. hours early on this podcast, but the forecasts the uh, the forecast are 0.2 percent for the December quarter, yep. with a an annualised figure of 1.4, uh, and that would that would bring about two consecutive quarters that have been at 0.2. Mm. Uh, yep. and the risk of just bombarding the audience with with more numbers, the the equivalent. Quarter for last year, so the December quarter 2022 GDP was at 0.9%. Uh, so it's a, a pretty big tail off. Uh, and yeah, so that's what's playing out now. That's it looks like it's really slowing. Uh, and then on a per capita basis, uh, because of population growth, it's actually GDP growth per capita is, is in decline. Yeah, right. There you yeah. go. As it, it comes back to your point before at the start, too, right? Where um, it feels like the central bank's uh, actions over the last 18 months or two years or so uh, are really, yeah, we're starting to see, you know, the, with, as you said, with the lag effect, that really like coming into play. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, I guess, what we're hoping for is we don't want to see, 
or two tech, a technical recession, which the UK are currently in, but not necessarily a full blown one at the moment. Yeah. Two negative quarters of GDP, so we're we're kind of getting down to that that level, aren't we? Yeah. So, okay. It's pretty skinny. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think some of the other statistics will point to just to paint a bit of a picture of. Um, well, it's precarious is the wrong word, but I guess it. I don't want to use the word interesting either, but it's a kind of at a, a point now where we need to tread pretty carefully. Yeah, it's a fine balance, I think. Yep. Probably, uh, yep. The way to describe it, Chris. Yeah. All right, so then flipping to inflation. So the, the charts we've got here, I guess, just talking more about kind of what we just spoke about. Um, so as I said, with GDP numbers coming out today, those charts would be updated and we're probably likely to see that the trend downwards actually drop um, quite low. So would you say 1.4? Yeah, for GDP, yeah. for the annual figure. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's um, and the RBA are looking for sort of two to two and a half as their as the long run average. Mm. So, yeah. um, what does that then infer? Do you think? Well, it, clearly, uh, the 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 targeted approach was to get inflation down under control. Yep. And in Australia, it peaked at uh, I think from him was just over seven percent. Yep. Seven percent. Yep. Um, and you, you can see there the chart is certainly trending down. Uh, and the latest, based on the latest monthly indicator, I think it was 3.4% uh, for the year to January. Yep. So it's, it is trending down. What's what's then interesting underneath that is the the, the split between discretionary and, and non-discretionary CPI. Yep. Numbers have been reported and uh, non-discretionary is double that of discretionary. So. Yeah. Discretionary is at two point four percent, and uh, obviously uh, non-discretionary double at four point eight. So yeah, wow. that's uh, that that slowdown in discretionary supports. Uh, I guess go, goes back to the GDP numbers that yeah. uh, discretionary spending is falling, yep. uh, and as a result, prices are tailing away. Yeah, right. And the, the thing that it makes me think too here is that you know, if we end up, I guess we see say for the March quarter that we're in the RBA's, I guess, band of inflation, um, it'll be interesting to see then what the RBA does about the rate, interest rate mm-hmm. policy itself. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think is May is their next Yeah, I think so. The the, structure. Yeah, correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they'll have a few more months of data and uh, yeah. Um, be, yeah, well positioned, you'd think, to, to make a call. Yeah, and I think if it holds that level, there'll be a significant amount of pressure um, on them to cut interest rates, I think. So, yes. But uh, the services inflation is going to be the, mm. the, the hard one. That's right. Or, or not the hard one, but the um, the biggest barrier to them cutting rates, I mm. think. But uh, like the rest of the world, I think there's some expectation for interest rate falls uh, at the back end of this year. Um, I've just flipped over and you can see, I guess, the inflation of uh, economies around the world. So, you know, Basically, in all the charts there, probably by India, really, mm. um, you can we can start to see inflation really starting to come down. Um, I guess to a point that I was talking about before, that first part's done, kind of yes. stopping the runaway train. Yeah. Um, now it's about finding the equilibrium of, um, of inflation going forward. Yeah, without, uh, without going too hard on the economy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, I was looking at the unemployment rates um, there at the bottom left uh, this morning and just kind of looking at the, the euro area um, unemployment rate and I guess they're all kind of trending down essentially yeah. because Japan, the red line there has sort of been flatlined for a long time and some people might be uh, aware I guess of the I call it problems but the, the issues Japan have had over the last couple of decades but uh, yeah I think it's uh, interesting to see given um, Inflation's coming down, um, GDP growth is kind of coming down for most economies, maybe by the US, mm. and the unemployment rate is falling. Um, you can see why it's a challenging environment for Absolutely. central banks. Yeah. 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 So, speaking of wage inflation, yeah, look, it's uh, it's it has been uh, certainly elevated in in recent times, and it's it's the highest it's been for uh, the sim, um, government simulation efforts. Uh, following GFC, yeah. uh, so it's yeah, back up to four uh, percent. I think four point one percent for the uh, the recent year just ended. 
so very uh, very elevated, and that's that's therefore uh, presumably playing out in the goods inflation. Yep. Uh, sorry, services inflation yep. rather that you spoke to earlier. Uh, so it's yeah, and that's again part of the challenge, isn't it? To, Absolutely. To get that inflation back overall. So it's seemingly a tale of yeah, as we spoke to earlier, that the tale of two two types of inflation. Yeah, One, it'll definitely be interesting to see that these numbers for next month. I guess once we get some updated mm-hmm. data to see whether there is, because at the moment there's no indication that that's sort of tapering off at all. Um, no. I think anecdotally there's a little bit of evidence, but it'd be nice to see, I guess, some, some harder some harder data. Um, I thought it was very interesting though to have the consumer sentiment side by side there, because yeah. that seems to have um, turned around somewhat, mm. which is um, good in a sense, given yeah. that consumers are 60% of the GDP number. Yeah. Yeah, it's still it's still quite low, but it has Absolutely. has shown a little bit of a, an uptick. Uh, perhaps that that might reflect some of the recent numbers around inflation and some of the talk that maybe interest rates have peaked and yep. people are starting to feel a bit more comfortable about the the road ahead. Well, there's less um less concern, I think, that you know, compared to where we were say twelve months ago, where you know you're looking at maybe you're looking at your mortgage and saying, all right, well. Um, you know, am I going to be underwater mm. in three months' time if we're going to get three more interest rate rises? Because yes. there was a big run of um, monthly interest rate rises there. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, let's see how that kind of stabilises it out. Yeah, I think people probably, possibly, you know, a number of people was holding on and, and hoping that, that uh, there was not going to be any further yeah. In yeah. interest rate increases. No, it seems like we're there. So if you've made it this far, well done, Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the, the other, the, the converse flip of that is um, savings rates or uh, term deposit rates, for example, cash account rates. If we start to see interest rates fall, um, we're going to start to see falls in, in that. And we already have yes. um, yeah. in terms of the term deposit options that we have for clients. You know, November, December, we're looking at sort of, I wouldn't say mid fives, but sort of low, you know, 5.1, 5.2. Yeah. Um, out past you know twelve months and beyond, and those numbers just you know, anything around five is now a, a good outcome. Yeah, they've pulled back a little bit, and that's that's obviously the yeah the expectation that rates will uh, not that this is a uh, you know, no, like a pretty strike that no. they're going to come down. And certainly, the sentiment is that yep. uh, the the rates um, may come down in the medium term. Yep. yep. So there's in, there's impacts there, I guess you know on, on both sides of that coin. Business conditions. I guess this is relatively important because businesses employ most of us. Mm. Um, so you know how they're feeling and how they're spending um, is an important metric. Yeah, and certainly the the business confidence, as you would expect, is uh, has been trending down uh, over the last little while. Certainly, uh, not not as you know has recovered from from the pandemic and yep. and what the, the doom and gloom and the Doom sales were suggested at that point in time, uh, and then following that, there's a really strong uh, kick up in confidence. Yep. But clearly, as 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 the interest rate cycle and the curve of inflation, and uh, yeah, that, that's no doubt put a dent in in business confidence. But hopefully, just like consumer sentiment, it, it starts to to recover. Yeah, turn around to stability. <clears throat> yeah, I think some some stability on um, you know the path forward because I, I suppose most of the uh, communication from the central banks around the world for you know, the last 18 months has been well we can't really give you much direction it's all data dependent yeah um, and I think especially here in Australia after um, Glenn Stevens's interest rates aren't going up until 2024 comment mm-hmm. and then yeah. you know 12 months later that's that's not the case um, yeah there's a, once we get some more sort of stability and certainty in that area I feel like these will start to see these kind of uh, numbers pick up Interesting though that business investment is is ticking up, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, I think that's that. Yeah, under, underlines the importance that, that perhaps businesses are now willing to yeah to, to reinvest. Yep. And uh, thinking that yeah potentially we're through the worst of things. Yeah, correct. Touch wood that we are. Mm. Households around the country. Yeah, probably just you touched on the savings ratio there. So it's the. Uh, Couple of slides ago, Chris, and, and the bottom right, mm. uh, bottom left chart, sorry, which talks the savings ratio is is really plummeted. Mm. That's uh, the build up of savings through 
through the pandemic and uh, yeah, because you couldn't do anything and people were uh, you know, accumulating some savings and uh, yeah, on the back of several interest rate rises and quite dramatically, uh, that's that's been into the level of savings that Absolutely. households have had and uh, you know that, that I guess a related aspect to that is the disposal income, uh, the blue line that sits above that chart. No, but should it be now in a negative territory? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that the, these that household income and consumption chart has been the one that I've been most interested mm. to see each month when the mm. RBA releases its pack, um, because that's as you can see that savings ratio has just been falling, and mm. I've been sort of just sort of thinking internally, like, like as we get closer to zero, yeah, um, that becomes a real problem. Yes, it does. The, basically, you know, the country as a whole, in in a household sense, doesn't have any savings. So, yeah, you know that that creates some significant risks of instability going forward. If there's a, a mass default, for example, I don't want to be, um, what's the word? Uh, doom and gloom. Doom and gloom. Yeah, yeah. there's another word mm. for that that I'm thinking of. Um, but it's you know, with negative disposable income and savings ratios getting close to zero. You're really at a point there where households are um, at risk, effectively. Well, you bring into the chart on the right end of of the slide there the household debt as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah disposal income negative, no savings, and then household debt. Yep. The ratio quite high. Yep. Uh, yeah, they're, they're three three indicators that are pretty important. Yeah, definitely. And psychologically too, coming like let's say that we're able to. Well, let's say that there are interest, some interest rate cuts which sort of amended that disposable income line back up close to zero. The first thing people are going to do is kind of spend the next sort of six months or so rebuilding their buffers back up. It's not going yeah. to be straight away going out and spending out in the economy. So, um, you know, that might be in one scenario an indicator that maybe we're in for a period of potentially just sort of low, um, you know, low economic growth. low growth, yeah. low economic output, mm. um, you know, Forecasting, yeah, that's, you never really know. But uh, I look at that, and that's kind of I'm like, well, you know, we need to turn things around first. But um, I guess expectations might not be that you know, this is all sort of fixed in a sense. Yeah, yeah, I, and on a on a somewhat related matter, I guess it'll be interesting to see what the how the phase three tax cuts yep. play out and what role they have in yep. uh, in oh, I guess all the economic numbers that people yeah, are going to. Yeah. To your point, build up their savings, savings again, or yep. they're going to spend that extra money yep. in their pocket after tax. So it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out uh, uh, from the commencement of the new tax year. Yeah, I'd be really surprised. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, mm. it'd be interesting, but I'd be very surprised if people went and spent it. Like, mm. I guess the, the, there's also an element here in terms of um, the, I guess, the divide between the haves and the haves nots in all of this data is yeah. is really interesting, right? So that's um, right. There's a We'll see how that uh, plays out. Now, to your point earlier, um, this was the chart that we were tracking all of last year, essentially about you know what are the what are the potential scenarios for the global outlook, and uh, so where do we sit now in March of twenty twenty four? Um, looking forward. Yeah, great question, Chris. And I think the uh, clearly we we want to avoid scenarios, Steve, and a major recession. The, I think the answer lies somewhere between combination of scenario A and, and B. So, yeah, there's a bit of a smooth rebalancing taking place and inflation's falling. Uh, interest rates hopefully have peaked. Um, but you, we're still seeing the macro volatility. So uh, the, the share markets are, are bouncing around a little bit on, on any news. Yep. So I think the, there was a day or a couple of days last you know, a week or two ago in the US market where uh, one day it went down 2% and yep. I think a couple of days it bounced back up 2%. Yep. So, yeah, the, the, the markets are still quite sensitive to any any information yeah, definitely. and uh, that, that's going to continue to play out. So I think, yeah, more more will sort of be be uh, prevalent uh, in, the, in the coming months as, as we get more more data. Definitely. Uh, you know, what's, what's the latest inflation read? I guess following today's GDP numbers – are they going to hit forecast? Uh, and then from an Australian perspective, what, what does that mean for uh, 
the direction the Reserve Bank take. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Next meeting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really kind of holding, I've got a, a marker post, I guess, of June of this year that um, I feel like a lot of the questions that we're wondering around or have been wondering about for the last sort of nine to 12 months should start, we should start to have some data there to answer some of these questions, mm. I feel. Um, it's a bit like December last year, it felt like to me was uh, a, a marker and then I'm just feeling like the middle of this year might be it might be another one. So, yeah. you know, as we move through these through uh, April and May and June, um, yeah, very, keep using the word interesting, need to find some more vocabulary, uh, interesting times. But, uh, to your point, I guess, around our financial markets um, and volatility, don't the bond markets show that in spades over the last 12 months? Absolutely, and, and as we've discussed previously, uh, bond bond prices react, uh, you know, will have an inverse relationship to interest rates. Yep. So you can see the bond prices fell uh, through, um, yeah, through some further interest rate increases in that twelve month period at the start, and as as the economic commentary started to talk to, maybe interest rates have uh, have peaked, and the reserve yep. banks or the central banks have. Uh, therefore, done their job. Uh, the expectation that potentially interest rate uh, cuts are along the way at some yep. point in the next year or two. Yep. That then starts to play in the bond markets. Um, so the bond prices start to recover. Yep. Uh, so over the last three or four months or so, it's uh, they've, they've recovered somewhat. Um, but yeah, that that talks to the, to, to the volatility. And often we don't think about volatility in the context of of bonds, but. Uh, it does play up to when interest yeah, rates are, absolutely. are jumping around a little bit. Yeah, I guess this is the inverse relationship of where, you know, say in a financial crisis in, back in 2007, 2008, um, you know, equity markets are plummeting and bond, bond prices are, are spiking. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we've had, pro I guess, primarily, because I'm about to flip over to the um, equity market performance, um, you know, where we had equities up and uh, bond, bond prices down. But, you know, as you can see there on the equity side, US is just streets ahead, and that and that is essentially a, a tech story, yes. really. Yeah. Um, the Magnificent Seven, um, sort of driving that, driving yeah, that along. Is. But it, it does it does highlight the importance of diversification. Oh, as hugely. Yep. I mean, we, we often talk about diversification, but it's it, it's not just in the context of um, diversification in 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 the domestic economy, but it's yep. also very important globally and yep. the. For 12 months, the the outperformance of the US market relative to the Australian share market, it's close to five to one. So it's, yep. uh, if you're just purely investing in the Australian market, you miss, you've miss you missed out on that uh, yep. outperformance in the US, uh, which doesn't mean it's going to continue. No, uh, no, not at all. No. It's just, it, it just highlights that importance. Uh, and even if you went back five years, so this is back 12, but if you go back five years, it's a very similar story. Yeah, absolutely. Chicken is on the back of the tech. Yep. the tech ride for those yep. magnificent seven. So yep. just, again, it um, underlines the importance of, of being diversified. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I think uh, that's a, a hugely important, because typically what happens is the asset classes that have underperformed historically end up being your best performers mm. you know, in subsequent periods. So the one thing I'm going to be closely looking at, I guess, is you know we're looking at the bond market returns. You know, if we, like all of this is built in on... Um, Oh, the bond, mar bond markets are pricing in what the expectations for rate cuts are. Mm. But if we start to see actual rate cuts and maybe the reserve banks globally come out and say that the, r the pace of cuts is going to be faster than expected, we'll see bond prices shoot up. Now, uh, what's that going to do to equity markets? Nobody knows because that could be earnings is incorporated mm. into this. But I think there's every, and again, this is not financial advice, but uh, you know, there's every chance that bonds um, be, uh, become the stellar performer, I guess, uh, in a, in the shorter term. Possibly, but you know, diversity is key, right? Making yeah. sure that you yeah. you um, you have your eggs in many baskets, rather yeah. than and again, sticking. We've spoken previously about sticking to the strategy, not yep. not getting too uh, caught Correct. up in in the you know the short term. Yep. And again, the bond markets. You, there might have been a tendency for people to feel. And when the oh, that tendency off, was huge. You know, I had yeah. multiple conversations yeah. with people saying, well, what, what's going on here? Mm. Um, and the ones that wanted to sell have essentially missed that 
um, the recovery. That recovery, because mm. since November, that's a like a six percent. Well, if you went to January, that's a six yeah. percent turnaround. Yeah. You know, that's a big number in in that asset class. Yeah. So, well, yeah. you've you've crystallised potentially a, a loss, and you've Correct. missed out on the on the recovery. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. But uh, as you can see, I guess within equity markets, everything kind of turned around in November. Um, both in bonds and equities, and that was really just about the interest rate story. Um, within the last month, I guess it's been slightly more subdued. Um, I guess most of the return that we've probably seen kind of happened in January and February, but we're not going to um, – it's not a linear yeah, path right. upwards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so but positive numbers are good. But basically, you know, all the portfolio reviews I'm doing at the moment, the people are pretty happy because as long as they've stayed invested mm. um, through the course – um, we've had some some pretty strong numbers, which is good. Yeah, you, well, you've seen double digit for twelve yeah. month performance. You've seen double digit growth, which is uh, yeah, which is remarkable. Yep. Um, but it doesn't mean it's going to continue, and it, we Absolutely. don't expect that to continue. Not the expectation, yep. that's for sure. I love this chart, Chris. It's great, <laughs> isn't it? It is pretty good. <laughs> but it also like it, it probably hasn't been updated since we last spoke. Yeah, you, know, you add another ten yeah. percent to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just it reaffirms the, um, the 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 periods of good are significantly longer than the periods bad. Yeah. But the way our brains are wired is that we feel the loss of the periods of bad significantly more than we do the periods of good, mm. and they're the behavioural or cognitive biases that we're we're trying to monitor and overcome on an ongoing basis. Yeah, which is which is naturally also very important as to where you are in your life cycle yep. as well. So yep. it's yeah, but it's a, yeah. I, I just love this chart. The fact that it's it tells a, a pretty compelling story. It does just yeah, again stay stay on the strategy. Yep. Um, don't don't sort of react emotionally. No, Albeit it can be quite difficult at times if you've yep. seen a a minus thirty minus forty percent in yep. a short period of time. Yep. But you know, this is the reason why yeah. we say yeah. hold strategy, hold That's firm, because right. you know, not history is repeating, but history continues to remind us yes. that uh, these are um, golden rules for a reason. Mm. All right, disclaimer for everybody that this is not financial advice. But uh, that's it for today. So thanks yeah. for joining us, Andrew. Yeah, thank you, Chris, and thanks for those that listen. Yeah, we'll uh, see you next month. <laughs>